going on guys? Aaron here with AV Astronomy. Today we're going to talk about my Maxitov Newtonian Telescope. I get comments, questions all the time on Twitter, Instagram, and in the comment section of my channel about this scope. And there's not a whole lot of people to, that really talk about the Maxitov Newtonian Telescope. I think it's an awesome scope. It comes in at a great price point per aperture and it gives you some fantastic results. So let's go ahead and get started with this. We're gonna talk about all the pros, all the things I like about the scope, some of the things I don't like, and my overall impressions, and why I think if you're considering getting into this hobby of astrophotography and you want a telescope that's gonna be, that's gonna have a fast focal ratio, give you nice contrasty sharp images and solid results time and time and again, this is definitely a scope design you wanna consider. So let's go take a closer look. So, as you probably have noticed, if you've been into this hobby for any amount of time and you've looked online at different scope designs, you got Schmidt Cassegrains, you got Newtonian reflector style telescopes, apochromatic refractors, and so on. And this is not one that you'll see come up very often. In fact, this particular model is an exclusive that's sold by Woodland Hills Telescope. And this, is, this particular model is made by Explorer Scientific. So why don't we see more Maxitov Newtonian telescopes on the market? Personally, I don't, I don't know why. I find this particular design to be especially suited for astro, astrophotography and wide field viewing. And it has a lot of pros and, and it's, it's fairly simple and easy to use. But let's face it, if you're gonna consider, if you're in the market, money's no object, most people are gonna go straight to an apochromatic refactor. And I think it has to go, and I think a lot of that has to do with just ease of use in the design. With a refractor, there's no collimation that's needed, um, and it's a, really just a simple matter of getting it set up, focusing, and you're ready to go. And there's a little more time involved with reflector style type telescopes. But in the case of the Maxitom Newtonian, or really any Newtonian, collimation is actually quite simple. So. Let's talk about what I like about this scope and why I find it such an efficient design for astrophotography. Now this particular feature is not specific to just Maxitom Newtonians, but Newtonians in general, you can get in this carbon fiber tubing. And if you have that as an option and you're looking at a reflector, get the carbon fiber tubing. It's lighter, so it's less payload on your mount, and it has better thermal equilibrium properties, which basically just means that once this thing reaches cool down, unless you have a massive change of temperature, over a short period of time, you're not gonna really see a shift in the focal plane. It's not gonna change focus on you. And this is not the case for aluminum tube designs or for apochromatic refractors that also have aluminum tube uh, designs. So in those situations, within an hour or two, sometimes less, depending how much the temperature changes, you're having to readjust focus, which can be you know, somewhat of a nuisance if you don't have an electronic autofocuser, which I don't. Uh, so that's a nice benefit. Lighter weight holds focus better. The other thing about this particular scope is you'll notice right here it has a corrector plate. It's called the Maxitov corrector plate. This is also seen on like your Maxitov Cassegrains. And what's nice about this particular design is it has a smaller obstruction than like a Schmidt Cassegrain corrector plate has. But what it does is it eliminates coma, okay, which makes your stars look almost like comets, okay, and it limit and it flattens the field. So you don't need a field flattener, focal reducer, or um, coma corrector like you would with a Newtonian telescope. It's, it's an all-inclusive design. It's ready to go right out of the box for astrophotography. All you gotta do is attach a camera, get it in focus, put it on a motorized mount, 
and you're more or less ready to go. So I really do like that part of it. It has a fairly fast focal ratio. I think it's f, f5.3, which is fairly fast. And it comes in at a 731 millimeter focal length. Now, if you compare that and contrast that to an apochromatic refractor, you would probably have to get something like a five inch, or let's just say, if we compare this to a six inch apochromatic refractor, or even a five inch, because that would have a more similar focal length to this design, a five inch apochromatic refractor is gonna cost many more times than this design would cost you. These run at about $899 on Woodland Hills Telescope right now. And a five inch APO would probably set you back around the neighborhood of, even at a, a good valued one, $3,000 or so. So three times the cost, like I said, if money's no object, go for it, spring for the APO. But if you're like the majority of us getting into this hobby on a budget, like I am, you're gonna wanna make the most out of your money here. So in that regard, it's an excellent design. It does come with, let's talk about the focuser a bit. It has a Crayford focuser. That's, you know, rack and pinion I think would be a little better, but this does the job. I've put a uh, camera with an off access guider on this thing and it held focus just fine. Are there better focuser? There are better focuser options out there. You can go with something like a Moonlight or Feather Touch focuser. You can always upgrade that on here. But out of the box, it's still solid. Now, I hit on collimation earlier, and I know a lot of people shy away from reflector style designs telescopes because of collimation. I've got an in-depth video, and I'll put a link in the description on how to collimate this thing start to finish. Say you got it used or something, and it's just really out of whack, use that. But if you get this new, or you find that your image is already looking pretty good, I'm gonna show you just how quick you can collimate this thing with a solid laser collimator. It takes no time at all. We'll throw a timer on it and I'll show you. It's, it's, it's really not a big deal. So there's two tools you're gonna need for collimating this telescope. A set of Allen keys and a quality laser collimator. This one is a Howie Gladder and these are about as good as they get with laser collimators. Hotec makes a good one that's out there as well, but I find this one to be my go-to every time. So this is how we're gonna do this. So you'll place the collimator into the focuser and what you'll wanna do is just tighten each of these just a little bit enough so that it's snug, but this still spins a little bit. Okay, then you're gonna just wanna pop it on take a peek inside and look for that red center dot and see where it is. The next thing you're gonna do is take off this center cap and make a small adjustment to center that laser right in the middle of that donut, which just small adjustments are needed. And that's about right right there. Now, I don't know if you can see this in the camera or not, but in the background, you're gonna see where that laser dot is reflecting back towards the emitter. And if it's not exactly on top of that emitter, you know your primary's off. So that's the next adjustment we'll make. You'll start by loosening the collimation bolt right here on each one of them. And you're gonna slowly, you're gonna choose one and look in the background you're going to be looking at your primary mirror on the side and watching for that other laser dot to overlap right on top of the one just like that. Then tighten them down and do another quick check to make sure they didn't move when you tighten everything down. Perfect. And guys, that is literally all it takes to collimate this thing. And in real time, it probably only took me about two minutes, maybe less than two minutes to get this thing collimated. And once you get familiar with it, which doesn't take long, and understand that just small adjustments are needed on each end, it is a snap. It is a piece of cake. And it's a good skill to learn because as you advance with reflector style type telescopes and upgrade to something like a RC, then you already kind of have a leg up in that area because collimating those is a whole different ball game. Um, there's much tighter tolerances with the collimation, but it's still an awesome optical design. Anyway, 
guys i hope i hope you found this informative i was my goal with this uh was to just better inform people out there that are considering different optical designs because this one doesn't come up a lot um, on search feeds and it's it's not sold a lot you've got a couple options with there's one with orion they have a seven inch or seven and a half inch and i believe skywatcher has a seven and a half inch a little bit larger than this one thousand or eleven hundred meter focal length about the same f ratio around f5 so and then you have this one by explore scientific six inch 731 millimeter focal length focal ratio f5.3 and that's really about it as far as the mass produced ones go i'm sure there's customized options out there that are far more expensive but when you consider all the different schmidt cassegrains apochromatic refractors this one is definitely low man on the totem pole when it comes to popularity but when it comes to design performance and price per aperture value it is very tough to beat guys this is aaron with av astronomy thanks for watching and until next time clear skies Thank you.